Hello, everybody. Today is April 21st, and it's my birthday. And I wanted to have a really fun show with you. So um, I'm going to keep my introduction of my guests tonight very short because I want to be mindful of my time and make sure that we've got enough time um, for our conversation because we're going to do something pretty cool. We're going to have a live uh, Oracle card reading. So please allow me to introduce to you, I'm so excited for this, my guest tonight, which is Ms. Melody Leon, owner of Makeup and Magic Transformational Services. Welcome, Mel. Thank you for having me. How are Hi. you today? I'm so good. Cheers. Oh, cheers, cheers. Happy like, birthday. Like, crack, like I'm turning like 16 today or something. <laughs> It's very far from that. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. I am so excited. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so much fun. It is. Yeah, yeah. So Mel, are you a Lancaster native? I'm not a Lancaster native. I've been here since uh, right before middle school. I came here from Coney Island. It's in Brooklyn. Yeah. So I'm, I, I say I've been here long enough to claim it, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, you're a Lancasterian mm -hmm. uh, by heart, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somewhere in there, that's awesome. And I, I want to know your story. What was a uh, young Melody like? Oh my goodness, rambunctious. Like I think I've had this deep of a voice since I was like two or three. I like, I've, I've, I was always like a very outspoken, um, hyper loving, talkative child. And mm -hmm. like I saw videos of me when I was really young, and I, I'm not kidding. My voice is really this deep. So you know, I was just awesome. very, very chatty always. That's great. You're like, mom. <laughs> That's actually one of the things my mom does to make fun of me. She's like, when you were little, you used to be like, mom, mom, mom. <laughs> so much better than a high-pitched screamer. Maybe I'll pick a lower voice for you. <laughs> and so you offer transformational services. So do you want to tell me a little bit about like, what is magic and make, or sorry, makeup and magic? I knew I was going to flip it. <laughs> That's all right. So when I say transformational services, I think at the core of it, it's like mastering the art of personal and spiritual transformation. So I've got a background as a professional makeup artist, and um, I always, I taught makeup, I did makeup. And one of the things that I always noticed was that when you put a mirror in front of a woman, or any type of individual that's looking to get services, a lot of times the first thing that they do is kind of put themselves down and point out all the things that they don't like, right? Yeah. So I noticed that I was kind of already doing makeup and magic where I was doing the makeup and I was speaking life and encouragement to these people, encouraging them to look at the things about themselves that are amazing. Um, but, you know, it wasn't a part of my actual service. Mm -hmm. So over time, as I started to get to know my gifts a little bit more, and as I went on my own healing journey, I started, I created a class called Makeup and Magic, where it was very much at the forefront that we were going to work on transforming our outside appearance through a makeup lesson or through a makeup service. But we were also going to kind of dig deep and talk about some of the things that are underneath the surface that most people don't talk about that may be maybe in the way of you, you know, being your best self. Mm -hmm. And letting our inner light shine. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, that is so essential. I, I know whenever I'm photographing, especially women, well, and men too, I will say, um, basically, whatever your inner thoughts are that are going on during the time of our session, it comes through your eyes. So if you're not happy internally, or you're thinking, can we just get this over with? Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't help. And it takes makes the session go by, like longer. Like, yeah, you're so right. <laughs> I agree 100%. Yeah, that energy needs to be aligned and those good thoughts need to be coming through. Mm -hmm. How did you discover energy work or this, this gift that you had? So the, for the, I'm about three generations in. My mother was an energy worker. Her father was an energy worker. And my father's mother was an energy worker. So I always knew that I had gifts, mm -hmm. but it took some time for me to kind of unpack it mm -hmm. and understand the difference between um, you know, what my intuition is and what my fearful thoughts were, because I always say intuition and fear are cousins. They sound a lot alike. Mm -hmm. So it just took time for me to really understand my gift. And then once I did, I realized that I was really good at helping other people understand theirs 
And I was yeah. really good at helping see things in people that maybe they didn't have the opportunity to see in themselves. Um, and because of my own healing journey, I learned a lot of different tools where it's kind of like where these Western psychology tools that I learned in my mm -hmm. own healing met with my energy work. And I, it's just is a really special, supportive environment that I've been able to create for people. And I started seeing that like, you know, on in my friends little mm -hmm. by little. And then I started saying like, hey, there's something to this. Um, so then I just decided that it, it felt like a calling to be able to do it on a larger scale. Yeah. Um, so then I just kind of took the dive and offered it. Did it. Well, and I know in some ways COVID kind of really pushed that. It helped you create a new shift because, exactly. yeah, there's a virus and you don't want to be getting all up in everybody's face applying makeup. No offense. Yeah. You know? Well, <laughs> What happened was uh, all of my weddings just got wiped off my book with COVID. Like there that was too. just like, huge. So I am also the owner of me of Blush Beautiful, and we're known for providing makeup services, um, and particularly in weddings. So with COVID, half my book got wiped away. Some other people just decided to just do a backyard wedding. Other people we couldn't reschedule. And I was grateful for it too, because really I was not ready to be face to face with somebody without a mask on in the middle of a really frightening pandemic. Right. So, but I also needed to be able to provide, you know, my half of the things that needed to be contributed. So, right. um, what I started noticing that a lot of people were really fearful and I started getting a lot of inquiries for my tarot readings and for my, what I call magic sessions. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll get into more what that is in a second, but yeah. um, it, it just created this space for this deeper work that a lot of people did not prioritize doing before COVID. And I think that COVID put us in a place where we were quiet. We were at home. We were stuck with our thoughts and, mm -hmm. and then with one another. And a lot of things were able to come to the surface and it created the perfect opportunity. I don't want to down, downplay any of the terrible things that happened right. or anyone who lost anything as a result. However, it did provide an opportunity for people to see the need for deeper healing. And yeah. it allowed me to step up to assist in that. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to do, do we want to do a reading now? Or do you want to talk a little bit more about your makeup lessons? Which way do we want to go? Um, well, we can, why don't we just do the reading really quickly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I did was, uh, so we'll, talk about the difference. <laughs> we'll talk about the difference between tarot and oracle in a moment, but I okay. pulled an oracle card before the session to say mm -hmm. like, okay, so what is a good message for everybody who's listening to this to be able to receive? And the card that I pulled is called Fortune's Wheel. Ooh. It says luck and right timing. So the basic message of this card is to understand that like right now you have power available to you. The stars are aligned there. Any uh, projects or anything it is that you're working on or that you've mm -hmm. been dreaming up to take action, to know that the universe is going to support you in doing that action and not to be fearful because your um, success is assured. And it says a lot of these things sometimes may seem like synchronicities, but it's really all divine. It's choreographed divinely. And I thought what was interesting about that is um, like I was sharing with you earlier, I did, mm -hmm. I had some clients earlier and I was doing some readings and yeah. sometimes when that happens, I get a lot more messages throughout the day because I've already primed the pump yeah. and that message was already coming to me, like, um, talking about re me stepping up and really just not shrinking back because right now is a time of my success being assured. And mm -hmm. then I pulled that card and I was like, oh, oh. synchronicity. Yes. So it was really, really dope. It was, it was, it was exciting for me to read it too. That is so awesome. And that's just a taste of some of the services that you provide because I know I've personally partaked and, um, it's just so powerful and instrumental. And I do want to talk, we're going to talk about, oh, we have a question. Yay, Chris. Um, what trends did you accelerate in your field during the pandemic? Um, oh, Chris, Chris trends did which you feel particular in makeup or in the magic? Well, I, I could answer both. So trends that I saw in, in makeup um, definitely were more eye products because we, you know, mm -hmm. most of our face is covered. That's so true. more long wear foundations and more eye products. What trends did I see in, in the magic portion was shadow work. A lot more people really willing to, you know, I think because people were not really able to hide from yeah. their shadows. Mm -hmm. you know, we were all stuck in the house with each other. Um, and so that is a trend that I saw is people really being able to look at their 
their shadows and, yeah. and, and what that looks like for them. I'm guilty. And I'm working on some of that now. I mean, you can shove those shadows in the closet or stuff them down wherever you want to stuff them, but they rise up mm -hmm. like really bad indigestion. <laughs> and also in opportune times too, like, hey, you're yeah. feeling vulnerable. Let me tell you about all your insecurities. Right. Oh, all the time. Oh my gosh. It's crazy how that happens. Oh yeah, it's not. Well, it's a it's a gift though because I think what a lot of people are have the opportunity to learn through that is those things are coming up and it's an opportunity to heal. You can shove it down and you can ignore it, or your body is telling you, "Hey, this is unhealed. Let's take care of it so we can evolve beyond it." So it really depends on the lens that you look at it through. Yeah, I'm really working on being more in a space of peace and healing, and Great. less in the victim dumb feeling because yeah. as much as I didn't think that in some ways I was playing the victim card I found out I was like well you know you're like wake the hell up you really are in some ways because it's like you know kind of comfortable in some ways I can get the sympathies and I can hold on to that but that's it's not letting me grow anywhere it's, I'm not going anywhere and yeah. I'm tired of it <laughs> so yeah. I'm well, working I mean, on that. <laughs> good for you for recognizing that and for embracing that. And you know, it's it's easy to kind of like then play the victim about being the victim, right? <laughs> He's right. like, oh, I'm a victim. But it's and like, I was like, know, I'm not doing that. I'm not being dramatic. But then in my head, I'm like, oh, woe with me. This is why this <laughs> happens. And it's like, no, wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah. Time out. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's something that like, and that's why I always recommend somebody, people having a practice that you can have on a daily basis to remind yourself of your empowerment so that you are actively anchoring in some time to remind yourself of your power. Because the opposite of being a victim is being empowered. However, a lot of us were not taught those tools. Right. And, but through society and through a lot of the lack mentality that we have, that victim story is constantly running. So we have to make sure that we're engulfed in ritual and being dedicated to the healing space enough to anchor in some of those empowering things mm -hmm. that are going to help us, you know, rise to that next level. Yeah. And I'll say on a personal level, just going back to why I, what I really benefited from with us working together. And granted, I have fallen off the spiritual wagon of readings, I guess, if you want to call it that. But I, I got behind and okay, COVID, I'll blame COVID. But um, you can still do this through Zoom. There is no excuse. I just started slacking. But the thing that I really loved is... Um, you created action steps and it wasn't just like you go and you hear your reading and then you go about your day. You really are saying like, okay, these are the, you know, ask the questions you want to ask. These are my discoveries and findings. And then this is how you can then implement this new knowledge that I've you know, imparted you with. The word. Yeah. <laughs> and it was so helpful because it's just more than, like I said, just like living in the moment. It's like, then how do you take it and actually apply it? to within your life. And that was so instrumental. So I appreciate that. Thank you. I think for me, that's where, when I say like the, like traditional Western psychology role kind of played into it, because, you know, I'm not a licensed therapist, but I have gone through a really extensive healing process within myself. And throughout that time, I learned a lot about cognitive behavioral therapy. And I learned about how it is that, you know, you can take certain frameworks like awareness, acceptance, and action, um, and, and different things that you can do to take it from a logical understanding and integrate it into your body so that it becomes practice and it feels safe to be able to do these things. Because if you understand something, but you don't feel safe implementing and integrating it, there's only so far that you can get. So right. it's really important that I share some tools to be able to let people kind of take it and run with it after the session, because it's really more about helping you transform mm -hmm. your personal, like your life and taking that power within your hands. So I'm just, you know, I'm just here to set you up for the alley-oop. <laughs> <laughs> and you do it so well <laughs> it's like it's naturally <laughs> innate within you <laughs> <laughs> i think so yeah i think so yeah you're right and so can you want to explain the difference between oracle versus tarot i i think you know i didn't always know and i think sometimes yeah, I for get sure. a little confused so the difference between the cards is like the difference between like um one is a fixed system, meaning like it never changes. So our alphabet has 26 letters. 
And that's always going to be our alphabet, right? That's always right. going to be the basis that all of the words that we make in the English language is based off of those 26 letters. So that's kind of like what the tarot is. The tarot has 78 cards and they are always the same cards, no matter who decorates mm. them with their own twist. Um, that's that. Mm -hmm. Whereas Oracle cards are really open for interpretation. So like the card that I read uh, the little reading from that had the fortunes wheel on it, mm -hmm. uh, that is more of adds a shaman theme. So these things will have themes to it, like shamanism or animals or angels, mm -hmm. and their meanings can be interpreted and decided by the author, however they want to be. Does right. that make sense? Mm -hmm. No, it does. Kind of leaves a little bit more. Yeah, you can it 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 leaves it open for interpretation, and then you can then take it and apply it to how you see fit and how it aligns with what you're going on. It's so crazy yeah. that you pulled that card because I was thinking earlier we had talked about doing your live reading, and I was like, okay, what question do I want to ask? What you know, fifty popped into my head, mm -hmm. but it really was like, okay, what is what am I looking for? And it's just like, yeah, there's some changes happening in my life, and like, okay. I am on the right path because I was feeling like I need a little bit of guidance. Is this right? Am I going the right way? And that's pretty cool. But yeah, and then I didn't even ask you the question. I didn't actually tell you what I was going <laughs> to And that's what's the beautiful thing about Oracle cards is that you can use them like as a journal prompt. You can use it as a conversation with your higher self. You can use it for, you know, there's so many things that people, I think Hollywood um, and the church has mm -hmm. certainly painted a certain picture Mm -hmm. of some of these tools of divination. And I think that they've been painted in a way that doesn't really allow people to use them to really set themselves up for success, to take their power by their own hands and yeah. to understand themselves more deeply. Like I have another Oracle deck that's a self-care Oracle deck. It's 50 cards. And what I'll do is I'll pull one, one a week. And mm -hmm. for like, self-care sometimes that we were talking about earlier like sometimes there's so many different things that you want to do then yeah. you wind up doing nothing because just like i don't even know That's so right. it's this is one deck that i can pull one card a week and say okay today i am going to smudge the house because that's one of the cards it says like I'm gonna smudge the house. Mm -hmm. So another one will be like put on a song and rock out. Or another one oh. will be, you know, you know, have intimate schedule, intimate time with your partner. So yeah. Oracle cards can be so many different things. Yeah. It's and it's like practical self care use that we should be doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It certainly sets us up for success to be able to have support, so we don't have to have to feel like we have to figure it all out. Sometimes it's nice right. just to have an option to pluck a card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go from there. Yeah, you. T yeah, you tell me, universe, <laughs> what right. I need to do. Yes. Yeah. Instantly. <laughs> yes. As I'm doing this. Not four days from now. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, I know you offer various products too, and you you call them uh, tools for performance. Do you want to? Do you have uh, examples of some? Oh, talk? I oh, no, I call them tools for divination. Divination. Oh, tools. sorry. To go, but it will help your performance. So if you <laughs> want to use tools for performance, you go right. This is your world, girl. <laughs> so, so essentially, what divination is is the the act of communicating with the divine, whatever that looks like for you, right? Mm -hmm. So what I started offering was when people come to my sessions, I offer them uh, options to be able to take their practice into their own hands. And one of the ways that I do that is like with smudge sticks. So mm -hmm. people have heard of white sage, but there's all different kinds of herbs that you can use. One of my favorites that we sell is um, Yerba Santa. So yes. it's a similar kind of stick that you burn. And this is known for clearing energy and connecting you to the divine and clearing um, any energy blockages, specifically in the heart space. Mm -hmm. So uh, we sell those. And then we also have like altar kits. So yeah. what an altar is, is just a dedicated space for someone to have when they're working on manifesting, where they're working on dedicating their time to their spiritual practice. And uh, we sell kits that, you know, when you have an altar, it's suggested that you have something representing one of each of the elements. So I put together a kit so that people who are looking to start their practice mm -hmm. have something to represent that. So we have this incense holder 
Cool. I like to call it cal- cauldron because it just yeah. sounds more dramatic. And that's yeah. right up my alley. So that represents the air. And then it also comes with like Florida water. And that represents water. It comes with a candle for fire. And then it comes with a little crystal, which is another tool. That's a really great tool. And this crystal is a crystal quartz tourmaline. So mm. what it does is helps balance all your energies and it helps remove negative energy. And then you also get some cards that tell you what each of the crystals do. So it's kind of like this package thing that's like, okay, I'm ready to take my spiritual journey into my own hands, but now what? Yeah. <laughs> I just made it really easy so people can kind of get started in a way that makes sense for them. And then they can take that practice into an everyday thing. That's awesome. Yeah. And like I was saying earlier, there's just so many different options that I tend to go, I don't know. And I just shut down and don't do anything. <laughs> so I guess it's very overwhelming to me, but it is something that I'm trying to practice more and connect with too. Even I was just like, okay, I'm just going to start with like crystals and we're just going to start there and I'm going to yeah. learn. And, you know, it, it is pretty cool how once you you kind of just decide, okay, I'm going to, maybe I'll start with candles or maybe I'll start with you know, salt or you know, meditation or, you know, kind of pick that one thing and then, and then explore it and try it. One of the things that I was sharing with you that I like to do is I'll pick a theme for a day. So like uh, Mondays, I tend to do moon work, you mm-hmm. know, whatever it is. That, because I have a free Trello board that people can get that um, I should put the link in there, but I don't remember the link offhand. But if you go to my <laughs> website, which is makeupandmagic.com, they have it on the on the um, banner there. You can, um, they're a free gift that when you come up, it'll pop up as a free gift. You mm-hmm. can choose to get it. Um, and what it does is that it allows you to kind of go through the weekly phases of what moon, what, what the moon schedule is and use the moon as a natural timekeeper. So Mondays, I'll just like check in and say, okay, where am I at with things? You know, and right. like, where, where's the moon in the sky? Like, what am I doing? <laughs> she's in, and, and, and then like on Tuesdays, if I inspire, if I feel inspired to do some work on Tuesdays, then I have tarot Tuesdays and, you nice. know, I'll, I'll do a little work on Tuesday. So it's kind of like you would plan for a business, but it's just like, if I wind up getting inspired on a Tuesday to do some of this work, let me just go and do it that way. You know what I mean? That makes so much sense. Yeah. And that does for me help to, to break down the overwhelm. (laughs) Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, cool. And we've got that, uh, makeupandmagic.com. It's M A G I C K.com. Yes. And the reason for the K is, um, that's really, it's alchemy. So for people who understand that, pardon me, that we have the ability to create our lives. We don't have to be in reactor mode. We can be in creator mode. Magic with a K lets people know that you have the keys to alchemy. You have the keys to magic. You have the ability to be able to step into this and be the author of your life. And, you know, so that's where, that's why I have a K instead of just regular magic. Ah, I was always wondering about that. I just never (laughs) got to ask you. Cool. Um, here's kind of a question too. Uh, advice for someone who's having problems setting boundaries. Ooh, I know you love boundaries. Oh, yeah, girl. (laughs) I'm all about it. So I think (laughs) at the core of it, we, you have to know that you're worthy of it. And you have to know that there is a difference between being selfish and caring for self. Mm -hmm. So once you understand those things and you love and honor yourself enough to say that I no longer want to pour from an empty cup or I no longer want to spend my precious hours feeling in a way that doesn't make me feel good, then you just find the words and practice them. You know, mm-hmm. once you understand that it's okay to do that, then I always recommend practicing it in the mirror before you get to the person, because then you don't have to find the words. Like when we're nervous about something, our our nervous system gets hijacked and we're like in fight, flight, or freeze, or fix. We're in these, these, these frames of mind that are not conducive to us being able to clearly think up a way to say something. So if we do it proactively, it gives us the opportunity to speak our truth in a way that's respectful of others, mm-hmm. but it's still non-negotiable for what we need for ourselves. So true. Oh my gosh, so true. Any advice for young energy workers, people who are discovering that they've got these talents and they want to explore? Yes. Uh, find a mentor. 
mentorship is really important. You have to, um, you know, find certain tools. I think it's a it's a healthy combination of of finding a mentor and then also humbling yourself enough to know that we all are a little crazy. <laughs> we all got a little. We all have some some fears and and some some programming. See, we've been programmed in a lot of ways to go against our intuition, to not trust ourselves, to feel, you know, fearful of stepping into these gifts. So a lot of times what people will do is just, they come from this energy work from a space of, you know, forget that I, this, this is what it is. And they're just, they're very, very bold and blazing, which is great, but you also have to humble yourself enough to know that there have been some things put on our plates that need to be digested or removed before we can show up in in an aligned state. Yeah. So find a mentor, give yourself some grace and have a big chunk of humble pie. Oh, I love that. (laughs) Um, I didn't tell you about this part, but I want to ask you some random pop questions. You ready? (laughs) Uh, All right. (laughs) Who gives you hope? Oh my goodness. That's such a great question. You know, I would say my wife. Amber oh, gives me hope all the time. You know, I when we first her. got together, I know I love her too. Um, she had no real relationship with the divine. She didn't even believe in a higher purpose. And she was just at a place within herself where, you know, she was not as empowered. And to see who she's become now and how it is that she speaks her truth and to see how it is that she encourages so many other people, including me, like she, yeah. like that, me, she, I would say she definitely gives me hope. She's a good cheerleader. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Uh, name one thing you give yourself permission to do. Oh, hurt people's feelings. Oh, yeah. All right. I do. And it's not intentional. Like, I don't give myself right. permission to be like this terrible person. But sometimes people need to hear things that they're not going to like. But I'm not responsible for what they hear. I'm responsible for what I say. Oh, shit. That was good. I like that. Uh, what's your favorite type of music? Uh, reggae music, like Caribbean music. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. I was just listening to Toots and the Maytals yesterday. That's a good one for kitchen no dancing. <laughs> oh, okay, well, I will show you them at some point. Yes. <laughs> you know who else I really love too, though? I love In This Moment. Oh. Oh, okay. They are an awesome band. I love, love them. Nice. We both learned something tonight. Mm. <laughs> oh my gosh, Dara, I could talk to you for so much longer, but our time, time is closing. And I'm so excited that uh, we got to you know show, show our guests what a experience, what an Oracle reading was like. And that's pretty mm. cool because I think people think about it, but then they don't actually do it or they're a little fearful of it, but there's nothing to fear. It's so insightful and it's, it's comforting. It's cool. Yeah. I mean, if one of the things I do want to say before we mm-hmm. close is, you know, we were not equipped with the spirit of fear. We are bold by nature and we have the power to protect ourselves. So if there's something that you are interested in learning, but you're fearful of it, just speak your power and surround yourself with white light and ask whoever your spiritual support team is, is to protect you from the things that are not for you and Mm -hmm. to give you a heart of willingness to learn. And you'll be guided to the things that are right for you. I love that. Oh, that's a really good closing. This is why I love hanging out with you. (laughs) Oh, thanks, babe. (laughs) You're so awesome. Mel, cheers. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you for having me. Thank you. Let's Chat is produced by the Candy Factory Collective at the Candy Factory Coworking Campus in Lancaster, PA. Production support by Anna Tran. Administrative support by Ann Kirby, Ariana Henderson, Robert Diggs, and Jason Mundock. Notes and links can be found on the show post at our website, candyfactorycollective.com. Candy Factory.